Hi everybody, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Doreen and my business is Privies and Prims. And welcome back to everybody that's a returning person and welcome to all the new ones. I'm glad you're all here. Um, it is Sunday and let me see the date. It is April 21st, 2024. And I had a busy weekend last week. And if you haven't seen, um, I did do a short video from inside my camper. So go back and watch that and I'll show you that shows, you know, what I was working on then. So I'm going to just talk about cross stitch this week and I have some exciting news that I will talk about later on in the video. And um, so let's get to what I'm working on. First, I'm going to show you my whip. I am a monogamous stitcher and so I am just working on this one and it's giving me a little bit of trouble. See here it is. And this is, I should show the pattern first, Little House Needleworks Needleworker. And I have already had to take out, I started in the center, which I don't usually do. I usually start in a corner. But because of the way, I, I kind of look at the pattern and then I decide um, where I want to start. I don't do the same thing every time. But also because of the frame this is going in and everything, I wanted to make sure it was centered. So I started in the center on this one, which was on the W. So I did this way over here. So then when I went to do the other half of the W, I actually did something wrong in here and I did an extra couple sections and it was three rows down from where it was supposed to be. So I had the that part of the W, the E and the L were finished and I had to take all that out. And then I took it with me to my fiber group yesterday and I did the W and the E and I made a mistake again and had to take it out. So I said, that's it. And my light was not working, which I'll tell you about. There's a light here that I have that I will not recommend, but I'm going to tell you not to buy it. Um, so I took that out and then the light was not shining any light at all. And so I just said, I'm going home. So I went home and then last night I started it again and this time I got it right. So that is what I have so far. This is on the Nate Berkus um, upholstery linen from Joann's. So you can see it does have like where you see like it's kind of a white almost. Those are thicker. Oh, it's got a needle right here. So those are thicker threads that you have to work around and it is sometimes a little challenging, but I don't find that I have a lot of trouble with it. And the reason that these letters um, kind of stop and are cut off is because they're finished with a darker color thread that goes across the bottom sections. So that's why parts of the letters are missing. So that is my current whip. This is going to go in this frame that my father made me many, many years ago. And let me see. And I have picked my colors, my thread colors and everything. Um, I laid it actually against the frame to make sure that everything looked like it would match. Um, that it's going to... Um, blend in with the barn wood. So I'm looking at this now and it's going, let's see, I still have an N and finish that E, but there's still going to be room on each end of it, which on here, there's nothing else on each side. So I may add in um, some kind of motif or something on each end of the word to fill up that space because I really want to use this frame. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. It's very, it's very heavy. This is the back of it. So I just have to unscrew that and take that off and make it work. So I'm happy to finally be doing that. My dad passed away in 2017 and I've, you know, he made that many years ago. So it's time to use it. Okay. I want to show you a freebie pattern that I found. And there's a Facebook group, I think it's called Star Spangled Stitchers. I'll put it across the bottom here after I look it up to make sure. 
But if you go in the files on there, this is a Barbara Anna Designs. And look at that cute design. And this is free. It's in the files on that group. So it, um, you just have to go into those files. And there's other patterns also, but this is the only one that I saw that I knew that I would definitely make. So I printed it out. And it has, um, let me see, it's got, the chart is in black and white. This is from 2014. Yeah, the chart is in black and white, and it's charted with DMC colors, and it's 66 by 65. But, let me see. I think it's, okay, so... I think it's this, and then this comes over here, maybe, the way, because it's on two different pages. So I'm thinking that there's two, it's either two different patterns, or this continues on over here. I'm not sure. Okay. But anyway, that's free in the files on that Facebook group. Now, I did order some patterns from um, Not Forgotten Farm for my... I'm doing a wall in my bedroom that is um, stitching themed. So I bought some patterns. I have a whole bunch on my wish list on, on the one, two, three stitch. So I, that's kind of my, you know how you write lists? Well, it's easier for me to just put them there than try to keep track of a piece of paper. But these, of course, are not on one, two, three stitch. So I just bought them. Um, so this is the first one I got from Not Forgotten Farm. And it's called um, Usefulness. And it says, of female arts in usefulness, the needle far exceeds the rest. Let me get that clear. I think that's clear. Yeah, so I bought that one. And then... You know, I bought another one that's a PDF, and I don't think I've printed it yet, so I need to print that one. And maybe I'll print that one, and I'll include a picture of it at the end of the video here. Okay, this one is called the Sewing Sampler, S-O-W-I-N-G. And here's the picture of it. And it says, my linen is my soil, my needle is my plow, my threads are my seeds, and my words, I do sell. S O W. So, sell. So, that is that pattern. And these are available in her Etsy shop, Not Forgotten Farm. And so, uh, you know what? I'll insert a picture here. Um, I have to print it out of the other pattern that I bought because it's a PDF. And I have not printed it yet, which is unusual. I usually print them right away. And then a nice, generous person sent me this pattern, Plum Street Samplers. And it says, count twice, stitch once. Yeah, wait, it's upside down. Count twice, stitch once. I could have used that on my whip, right? Because I didn't count twice, I just counted once. But, so this was... Somebody sent this to me, gifted to me. So thank you so much. And let me see. I don't have a lot to show you this week because, you know, my videos are getting shorter and shorter. And I, I know it's because I'm a monogamous stitcher, so I don't have a whole bunch of whips to show you. But we do have stuff to talk about. This one is a punch needle design. And this is Lori Brecklin, Not Forgotten Farm. Saltbox Farm. It's called. I saw this that somebody had stitched or punched it, and I think it was on Instagram. I saw it, and um, someone asked her where it was from. It's from Primitive Quilts and Projects, Spring 2012. So if you're if you have a subscription to them, you can go online and you can access all the back issues. So you can go back. This is Spring 2012, so it's way back, but. That's where you'll find this design, and then you can punch it. So I plan on punching that. Um, I do have two full finishes, but one I can't show you yet because it is the wedding sample. Um, not really a sampler. 
but it's a wedding design that I did for my son and his wife. And I don't know if they watch or not. And I'm going to mail it to them tomorrow. So I did do a short video clip so I can insert it next week after they receive it. And I'll get to show you. But the other finish that I have is this one. And I showed you um, last week that I was working on this in my camper. So I did not make it into a drum. I framed it. So that's hands-on design. And this is going to be the centerpiece, I think, for the wall of stitching-related designs. And there is my finish. Now this frame came from a thrift store. A friend of mine got it. I am super happy with this. And several people have asked me um, what colors I used. I have to take the time and... Um, I said I was going to do it last week and I haven't done it yet because I forgot completely about it. But I have to take the time and write that down because some of them are just used in like one place and some are used in two places. So I have to write that down and then I'll post it. I'll post my um, conversion on my Facebook page, Privies and Prims. So be watching for it over there and maybe I can discipline myself to do that today. And get that done but I really like this the, the frame doesn't exactly match when I do a frame I like to pull a color out from the um, something from the design now it does match the scissors that's the only thing it matches on here for like exact color kind of and it's not really even exact but it's close but to try to you know, I went in Hobby Lobby and I went in Michael's looking for rectangle frames. They are really hard. They like, they didn't have them. I found two, I think in Michael's that were like for collages, like you could get three, four by sixes or three, five by sevens, but they, they weren't the right size and they didn't match. And so my friend found this, my friend Lois found this at a thrift store for me at Goodwill and it's close enough. And she gifted it to me, so the price was right, and I really, really like it. So this is it. That's my fully finish. So um, I haven't covered anything on the back yet. It's just that's how I did it. So I need to put the um, make that a little more permanent and then put the brown paper on it. I don't get fancy with my framing. They're not like family heirlooms. <laughs> They're just going on my wall. So... That's that. Um, I'll give you a peek of this other one just because it's sitting here, but I'm going to cover a lot of it and show you. This frame, Lois also got at Goodwill the same day and gifted it to me, and you can see it matches right there. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to keep this frame because they like modern, and everything in their apartment is like black and gray and white, so it's they, this is the one I was trying to find the frame for really when I went to the store and I couldn't find any that matched where this one matches perfect, but they might not like it. They don't like primitive. They don't like antique stuff. They're all totally modern. But so here's the thing I was just telling my friend Sherry on the phone. Hey, Sherry. Um, if they don't like this, it's okay because the joy for me was in stitching this for them and it's from my heart and I picked it out and I think that they would like it but they might not like it because it's not modern and again that's okay my joy was in stitching this for them and giving it to them and then if they stick it in the closet I'm okay with that it's okay I'm not forcing them to like something just because I like it um, this isn't even my style because it's not primitive but um I think they'll like it, maybe. I don't think they'll like the frame, but it'll work until they find one that works for them that they can pick out themselves. Okay, these are the punch needle finishes that I showed you that were still in the gripper frame last week. And they will have, right now they're just, this is um, a pattern by stone and thread. And right now I just have turned the back and then I'm going to stitch a piece of wool on the back that matches and it'll be open at the top. So it'll be like a little pouch, you know, with a hanging string on it. And these are made for someone else and she wants me to make four sets total. So I will be doing more of these uh, as time goes on. 
I have to really force myself to do the punch needle because all I want to do is stitch. And all I used to do was punch needle. But now I've got this new addiction of cross stitch and that's all I want to do. So the next thing I want to talk about is lights. I, and then we're going to talk about my big news. So I got this light right here. It is USB. It's rechargeable. And I got it on Amazon and it's just some off brand. It's not a name brand that we recognize. And because I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on the daylight, the halo, not daylight. The, is it daylight? Halo glow go or whatever it's called. I don't want to spend a hundred dollars. I've read some terrible reviews of, of how easy they break. And then other people love them and they've had them for years, but I, I'm not just not going to take that chance with that kind of money. This was 30 some dollars, I think. Um, and I kept it too long without using it. So I can't return it now to Amazon. The, um, that time frame is past, but I do not recommend this. Um, I will put a picture of it at the end with, you know, don't buy this, but, um, the light, I tried to use it yesterday at my, st um, stitching group and the light, let's see if I can turn it on. It looks bright there, but it's, it's not very bright at all, actually, when you have it on fabric. So let me see. I can show you. Well, it looks bright here, but it's not it, actually in person. This is actually another finish that I've showed before, but I'll show it again. I don't have a frame for it yet. I have not yet found a frame that this fits. So I'm not able to display that one yet. But anyway, so back to this, um, it was not like I turned the flashlight on my phone and shined it on the fabric. And there you could see that there was light shining on the fabric on this. You could not, it was like there, the light wasn't even on and I had it plugged into the wall. So, um, it's not, you know, most things like if the battery's low and then you plug it in, then it would get bright again. This one doesn't. I, I just think the light is not bright enough. So the magnifier works, but the light is not bright enough. So after the retreat, I bought this one. And I don't know why I didn't take this with me yesterday. I should have. This is a um, Bright Tech light, but it has to be plugged in. So it has, you know, your regular plug. So if you can, if you have an extension cord that you can use this one and I don't have it plugged in, so I can't show you, but let me do that. Let me plug it in and show you the difference in how much brighter this is. And I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm going to sit in my rocking chair here and show you, and I don't, here's my spring display, by the way, I don't want to blind you, but look how much brighter that light is. Look, let me see if I move it right while I have a halo. Look, look, I have a halo. <laughs> That's so funny. I wonder why it's doing that. See that halo floating above my head? Because I'm an angel. We all know that. Anyway, you can see how much brighter this one is. So this is um, Bright Tech. And this was 30 some dollars. And this is a five diopter. So I think that's two and a half times um, magnification. So I will... Um, include a picture at the end of this stuff here and show you how I have it displayed because I have the camera turned the other way right now. So I can't do that. All right. So let's get back to over here and I'm going to show you, tell you my news. Okay. Back to the couch and sorry about this reflection. Like I'm facing a window, which makes great natural light by the way. Okay. I have news because you know, I'm kind of crazy, I think, but um, the reason I want to do this is yes, because I like to socialize. I like some me time alone. Usually after I'm with a group for a couple days, I need to just go and take some time by myself, but I love to be around other people crafting and stitching. So I have a retreat in March and I have a retreat in September. The retreat this coming September, it is in Waynesville, North Carolina. It starts the day after Labor Day. It is sold out. Um, I do have a short waiting list, so you must email me if you want to be added to the waiting list. For the last retreat, everyone on the waiting list got called. So um, then I think there were 13 people. 
so uh, not all of them could go when I called them, which is how, you know, everybody got called. But anyway, you have to email me at priviesandprims at yahoo.com if you want to be on that reading list. Excuse me. I want to add a third retreat because I'm crazy, right? So I don't want to do like the bingo and the door prizes and all the kind of stuff. I just want to do a couple days of just to gather together and stitch and maybe do a smalls exchange and maybe a meet and greet, but no prizes or anything like that. No goodie bags. Um, just, it would be very casual. So what I need you to tell me is if you would be interested in that, would you be, um, more open to June or November or December air, like November, December time. Um, prices are cheaper for campsites and rentals in December. So one place I was looking was Claybo's campground in Pigeon Forge. They do have a meeting room that's Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. The meeting room is $50 a day and there's no kitchen or kitchenette. So that, could be a problem it's because we like you know do potlucks or stuff so there's no kitchenette um, they do have rentals and they do have campsites now the thing with pigeon forge is if we go there to stitch are y'all just going to want to go shop and not come and stitch or are you going to stay and stitch so that's one thing there um, but wherever i do this it needs to have rentals for people that don't have campers it needs to have campsites for the ones with campers and then it has to have a well-lit room um, for us to stitch in and preferably with a kitchenette so i am open to suggestions i'm just putting this idea out there i'm not doing any like plans and commitments right now um but I just need your ideas. So that's the question for this week. Tell me if I had another one, would you want it in June? Um, I'm, I know I'm already booked for like the 15th to the 17th of June for a vintage camper rally. So it would probably be either right before that or right after that. But anyway, it's either, and probably if it's in June, it would have to be during the week because at this point in time, campgrounds are already going to be booked for the weekends because it's short notice. So June or November or December or so, and give me an idea where, do you know a campground that has a meeting room that's not like the middle of a game room or laundry room at the campground and that has a kitchenette and also has rentals and campsites and some of them, I know there's a KOA, but they're like $70 a night for the campsites, and I don't want to pay that much. So I'm, I'm open to ideas, open to suggestions. So uh, am I crazy, or is this a good idea? I don't know. Just came up with it today. You know, I was looking, Kathleen Bailey, she posted pictures of her rug hooking group, and I was like, oh, my gosh, look, they're all doing beautiful work, and it looks like fun. And I miss getting together with everybody. So six months in between gathering feels like too long for me. And um, so I want to get together. I don't want to wait that long. So tell me if you're on board with this, give me some ideas. And that is it for today. Um, I will see you on the next video. And hopefully I have some more stuff to show you. So happy stitching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm back just for a minute. I totally forgot that I wanted to show you um, the campground that I went to after I left the first one. I did a short video showing this campground because it was just so gorgeous, but I ended up only staying one night and I left um, the next afternoon. It was just way too quiet for me with no music, no internet, no nothing, and I could not even open the windows in my camper for the wind was so strong because my windows are just plastic and they open out like an awning. And then it has like two things here that you tighten a knob and that holds it up. So um, because my camper is originally from Europe, if the wind caught those windows, which again is just flimsy plastic and blew it off and broke it, which would have been really easy to do, 
I would have to order new windows from Europe. So I was really careful with that and I only had my window open like an inch. I could not sit outside. It was just so windy. Um, so I just decided to go home early. So stay tuned here. I'm going to show you a video of the campsite because it really was beautiful. But it would be better for me to go there with a group rather than just by myself. So it wouldn't be, you know, we all say we want to go for peace and quiet, but this was a bit too quiet for me. So stay tuned. I'm going to have that video here. Hey, everybody. This is where I am for the second part of my camping trip. This is Watauga Dam Campground. It is extremely beautiful here, as you see, and very quiet. And this may sound weird, but it's too quiet for me. Um, I'm by myself. There is, there's, my neighbors have their fishing set up. Several people fish. I've not seen anybody catch one. Um, and the mountain goes way up there. So, there's no cell service. There's no Wi-Fi. So, I don't even have music. Can't watch YouTube. Can't answer comments. Can't check Facebook to answer comments or questions. So, um, you know, that's okay for a day or so. But it's just so quiet here. If you had um, some music or someone to talk to, it would be ideal. I did want to come by myself and just be quiet. Which it is. Um, but I don't know that I would come here again because I would like to at least have some music. And I, if I did, I would download some music ahead of time. And then I think I'd feel better. But anyway, this is it. Um, I'll show you my campsite here. It's here. And that window right there is at my bed. So I can sit up in my bed with the pillows propped on the wall and look out that window to the water. And then the campsites go, let's see, down there in a row. As you can see them. I do hear a waterfall, but it's got to be on the other side because I can't see it, but I can hear it. <laughs> 